So now that we've had a brief introduction as to why we care about statistical thermodynamics, let's go into a little bit of the nuts and bolts. Um, and so we're going to start simple. We're going to start with an ideal gas. In fact, that's the only um, system we're going to consider um, because uh, things just get more complicated once you uh, deal with non-ideal behavior. So everything we're going to look at in this class is sort of the, you know, the, the simplest case of an ideal gas where particles are not interacting. We don't have to worry about intermolecular forces or things like that. Um, so let's say we have you know, something like one mole of an ideal gas, meaning that there is Avogadro's number of gas particles, whether atoms or molecules. Um, and so maybe one of the questions we might ask ourselves is if we have this mole of gas molecules, uh, what is the energy? of this mole, right? In terms of what we've learned about thermodynamics, this would be like asking what is the value of U, right? What is the internal energy of our system? Um, or, you know, if, if something changes, could we calculate a change in U, right? So this is getting back to, you know, fundamental things we care about in thermodynamics, you know, thinking of the first law of thermodynamics. So if we take the simplest case of an ideal gas, and we're, again, going to look at this from the perspective of, let's say we can calculate things involving one molecule um, for our ideal gas system. Say it's a bunch of helium. And we can calculate the energy levels of a helium atom um, by solving the Schrodinger equation. Right, H psi equals E psi. Um, and I'm going to put a subscript J here because each J represents a different energy level. Uh, actually, not in this case, it represents a different molecule, right? So J goes from 1 up to, we'll call it just big N. And if, we're, if we have one mole, the big N is Avogadro's number specifically. But to make it more general, N is the number of molecules or atoms. We could say particles to be more general. Now, if we assume these don't interact because they're ideal gases, um, then we can just take the energy of each atom and add it up, and that is our total energy. So we can say E total is just E1 plus E2 plus E3 plus all the other E's all the way up to number N. Okay, and so our E total is going to be a function of, it'll depend on how many particles we have. So the more particles we have, the more energy there is. Um, and in the case of an ideal gas, Oops, my palm, my uh, hand just keeps moving things around. All right, depend on on the number of particles, and then also on the volume, like how big is the is the box. Um, for those who have had quantum mechanics, you can think of the particle in a box, right? The volume de uh, affects the energy levels of that. Um, if you haven't, then don't worry. There are ways we can tell that um, volume matters for the energy. Okay, and so that's, that's sort of the simplest case for an ideal gas. For non-ideal gas, things will be more complicated because you'll have cross terms, but um, we're going to ignore that for now. You know, but you could still write up, you know, what is E total for a particular combination of quantum states, right? So, you know, depending on, you know, how many particles are in a particular quantum state, you know, you're going to get different total energies. Okay, so we're, we've added up all the energies, and what we're going to do now What we're going to do now is imagine that we can make a bunch of copies of our macroscopic system. So we have number one here, number two, number three, etc. And so this is this is a purely theoretical exercise here. We're not actually making copies. So each of these represents, you know, a mole of our gas, one mole of ideal gas. And these copies of our systems, so these are copies of our original system, the copies of our system are in an, uh, a heat bath at a fixed temperature. Uh, the point of this is that all of these systems are at the same temperature. That's, that's the whole point of saying they're in this fixed heat bath. We call this an ensemble of states. Um, and our ensemble, all, all of the copies have the same 
number of particles, the same volume, and the same temperature. So we're, we're trying to keep that fixed across them. But their individual quantum states, what's happening on an individual level in each, uh, in each copy is not the same. So for example, say in copy one, particle one has an energy of, of uh, to pick a number out of a hat, uh, one times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Uh, just to, because it's going to be a really small number because it's one, just one particle. But in state 2, it has 2 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. In state 3, maybe it has 1.5 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Right? The individual particles will, vary, will d differ between all of these different copies. But what we're interested in are what are the statistical properties if we consider a very large number of these copies of states. Right? For each one, we can sort of look at what's going on individually. But what we're really interested in are what are the statistical properties. Statistical properties as we look at this large ensemble of states. Um, and one thing we, we may want to know, uh, right, the quantum states are not identical, but um, how many states have a particular energy, right? How many of these, these systems, these copies, have a particular energy? Uh, so we could say, um, you know, our to the total energy when you add them all up. We need to look at, at these EJ values. Uh, so we're going to pause here in this video and, and continue this thought in the next video.